We drove five hours to Arizona's Kofa Wildlife Refuge with a plan to journey deep into the heart of the Sonora Desert. But as fate would have it, just as we arrived at the trailhead, my dashboard became a full-blown disco of warning lights. We tightened the battery cables, checked and rechecked the fuses, but still had no idea what was wrong. We didn't want to go home, but if we continued, we knew there was a very real risk we might soon be broken down in the desert. Do you guys know what Kofa means? Yeah, I'll okay. kill King of Arizona is right. Copet means a set. Okay, cope like a cough. This electrical problem, whatever it was, man, that was scary. Hopefully just tightening up that lead is all that we had to do. My buddy Greg was with me, and if you've seen any of my other videos, you know he can fix almost anything on a Jeep. And my buddy Ryan, well, he's been stranded with me on the roadside before, so we put our heads together and decided to press on. Kofa Wildlife Preserve is a hidden gem in the Arizona desert, formed in 1939 to give bighorn sheep a protected habitat. Kofa is named after the King of Arizona Gold Mine, a mine that started in the 1880s and was producing gold until 1937. Now the most valuable find out here are the bighorn sheep. Spotting one of these beauties is like finding a needle in a haystack, and it's that thrill of the chase that people come here for. We bounced along to the spot where my buddy Jeff was waiting, and my warning lights continued to go off. Jeff is another guy I love to travel with, not only for his easygoing nature, but also for his knowledge of machines. Quick side note, you should see the 1950s Willys Overlander he built from scratch. We arrived at Jeff's camp and it was just then that the Jeep quit and wouldn't start again. So number 11 is this one. And you think those so, two can switch? Well, got yeah, the, uh... so we can see. Wait, wait. We've disconnected both the batteries Hopefully we're trying to reset the computer. All the lights are off. The ones that were on are now off. See what happens. Ah, guys, nothing. Not good. We worked on the Jeep until well past dark and eventually pushed the Jeep to a more level spot so we could camp. We had been snow camping the week before and I had found a squirrel keeping warm in the engine bay. And I really started to think this might be a clue. But looking for a chewed up wire would be much better done in the daylight. So we turned our attention to the real reason we were out here. Good, yeah. Hold your hand out. There you go. Wow, that's really good. Oh, he's eating it. No, oh, no. Boy, that was he ate really your poop. good. It was tough, but I was able to fall asleep that night, not knowing how we would figure this out, but knowing that with these guys, we'd come up with something. desert sunrises you just don't see. These colors are special. I don't know if it's the rocks. Definitely what we came out here for. Uh, we slept great. You know, the temperature didn't get that cold. I think it probably got down to 50. It was good. I was able to forget about the fact that I have no idea what's going on with this Jeep. We'll inspect it now that there's some light. I don't know if there's a, a wire. You know, I, I, uh, I've had this happen before, which is gone out camping in the cold like I did last week found an animal in the engine bay like I did last week and they've chewed through some wires and so there's a good chance we're going to find something like that but there's also a good chance we're just not going to find it and uh, so the question that we have today is are we going to continue or not I have a, a feeling we're not going to find the issue and it's not going to happen until later on the trail today you know well if it's a hot issue then you know just got to let it cool down I actually got out my infrared gun so if it did it I would like to see the quit temperature meaning when it stopped doing it yeah and then when in the start temperature and look at that variant and figure out whether it's a, a sensor Greg what do you think how how much should we poke around and try and find that chewed wire at least 
least a little bit. So Greg and I were Sorry. up in uh, Coyote Flats. Yeah. So something chewed through my wires. Yeah. Um, oh, really? Yeah. Oh. And so I was I was stuttering down the highway, getting like seven miles to the gallon or something yeah. crazy. It was the O2 sensors that had been chewed I through just, my rodents. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. A little bit low, but I mean, you're still in the safe. Not enough to cause an issue. Luckily enough, the Jeep started in the morning, but we still had no clue what was wrong. I almost think uh, it's gonna be like an electrical shop. Just need more clues and figuring out, okay, <clears throat> does it do it when it's associated with a bump or does it after a long haul up? What we're deciding is you're willing to tow me Mm -hmm. Four hours or more to get back. Sure. <laughs> Jeff's in for that as well. So our group decision is going to be to continue with our original plan to go deeper into the wilderness, knowing that we have an undiagnosed electrical issue, which is something that's hard to fix because this one's crazy. Since when have we turned around? <laughs> Just because your Jeep Never yet. <laughs> All right, so good luck to us. All right, give me some nice driving today. There's a lot of desert out here. We're at this part of the drive where we're driving hours across the desert to try to get to an old line cabin that was uh, built for people that were ranching cattle out this way. We're making really good time, going pretty fast through here, having fun with the road. Dragon, buddy. lights were going off intermittently for an hour. We decided to pull over and let the engine cool, and that's when we noticed the alternator itself was incredibly hot. So we were using this to cool down the alternator, which, you know, the alternator seemed like this might be the problem. You know, a voltage issue would make sense for all these alarms going off. It was reading, what, what was it, like 500? 533. 533. Coil. Way hotter than it needs to be. And so we just cooled it down. Now turning the Jeep on, the alarms are not there anymore. So that's good. What does it say now? 176. All right. So, so we got seven miles to make it to Hoodoo. If it starts, oh, we're good. If it doesn't then, start, we're screwed. All right, guys. I wouldn't say we fully know what's going on, but uh, trying to cool off the alternator again. There is a replacement in Blythe, a couple hours away, closest one. How confident are you it's that alternator? Pretty high? Well, the alternator's definitely bad. Is it the problem? I don't know. Hmm. But what kind of a trip would it be if we didn't have your hood up in the middle of the road? <laughs> hey, nothing's falling off. That's a crazy thing. It's the first trip. We have a couple, nothing's falling off. We have a couple days left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We had stopped again to let the Jeep cool off, but this time our fears were realized when the Jeep wouldn't start up again. All right, this is what it has come down to. Alex J, giving me a tug.
cabins, you know, the issue is if somebody's there, there's only one cabin, we're out in the middle of nowhere. So this hoodoo cabin is definitely a question. Except Ryan, I'll check. Hey, fellas. He's the saying there's day. nobody there? Nobody here. Awesome. You see the windmill over here? This is the hoodoo cabin. It's a rancher cabin. Well, we've made it to the cabin. The Jeep might not start again. We just have to kind of strategize about what we're gonna do to reroute so we don't get stuck too deep in. That's what's going on over here right now in Arizona. You wanna sleep in here, Bryson? The Hoodoo Cabin is a little piece of history, a line cabin that saw its fair share of action back in the 40s when it served a local cattle company. These cabins are scattered all across the vast expanse of the southwestern deserts, and each cabin has its own story to tell, built into the land and adding that extra little bit of history and intrigue to our adventures. The Hoodoo Cabin has an attached well with a working windmill powering it and is maintained by the rangers to provide water for the resident bighorn sheep that the preserve was created to protect. It's not just about the destinations we seek, but also the stories that unfold along the way. Fixing a broken Jeep in the desert is not a task for the faint-hearted. It requires a mix of resourcefulness, adaptability, and determination. This weathered cabin with hidden tales of cowboys relying on their wits to survive reminded us of the spirit of exploration that brought us out here and the ingenuity that would have to get us home. But first, marshmallows and a good night's sleep. Last night, put the awning to give a little bit of cover to things like the bikes and stuff. I had the battery on the trickle charger last night, so hopefully we'll see. Gave it a little bit of charge. One of our breakfast specialties is pancakes with M&Ms dropped in them. We call them people pop pancakes. No idea where that name came from. I didn't make it up. Uh, but you basically just make a pancake and then drop the M&Ms in the side, flip it over, cook them, try not to get them too burned. That's perfect. That's too burned. That's somewhere in the middle. But uh, anyways, these are people pot pancakes. Boys sound like they're having fun up there. So uh, time to give them a little bit of sugar. <laughs> Bryson's. I woke up at five in the morning. Because you were cold, right? You were out of your sleeping bag. All right, let me make more pancakes. After using the solar batteries to charge the Jeep overnight, I was able to start it up. We went for a quick bike ride down the start of the trail we had planned on driving, but now had to pass up because of the Jeep problems and then headed back to the cabin. We were still a couple hours from pavement and wanted to get as close to the road as possible before the Jeep died again. We had been towing the Jeep through some pretty easy terrain yesterday, but the path out would be a much more difficult road to tow. We made it about 45 minutes down the trail before the Jeep was once again dead in the desert. So my battery is dead. We're down to about seven uh, volts and both the batteries. So what we're gonna do, we've had a little bit of a trail conference and decided that we're gonna take a battery out of a running rig, replace mine, put mine in so mine can charge then when we get Back further down, we're gonna see how much charge we have and whether or not we can swap them again. And that may be enough for me to get back to pavement. This is a voltage load tester. When you uh, flip the switch, it's gonna basically heat up a bunch of coils in here, putting a major draw on your battery. 
and you can see how strong the battery is. Let's see where we're at. Put my positive. Anybody want to flip the switch? Sure. So currently I can see we're at 10 and when you flip it, it goes to bad. See that? See how it goes to bad? Bad. All right. <laughs> we had to jump Greg's Jeep because he was on my old battery. His battery's now in my rig and I'm going to kill it. It's going gonna, it's gonna to hurt your battery. Right? It's going to hurt your battery. Me right now like this? Yes. So, well, it's okay. It's a sacrifice. Yes. It's, it's a real sacrifice. Thank you. So we made this crazy mistake. We connected Greg's battery without disconnecting my alternator. And it sat there smoking under the hood for a little bit while we were doing other stuff, hooking up the other battery. And when we came back, we had killed his battery pretty low. I was able to jump start it, uh, but I think that really has changed the dynamic of this drive. Uh, I don't know how much we took out, but there's quite a bit. We're trying to make it to what's known as the pipeline road. Jeep's starting to run a little bit slow. And we're gonna have to do another battery swap. My voltage meters are going off and Jeep does not like this. So we may not make it there, but uh, we'll see. The road where we are right now has gotten a lot better than it was. Maybe at some point do a recall to that part store for the alternator. We're gonna go as far as we can. I don't know, at some point the engine shuts off. If your voltage is too low, I don't know at what point. I don't know if we should find out. We'll see. Let's say it's 6.9. But I've got friends. And with friends like these, got no reason to worry. Willie's Overlander and Jail Overlander helping me out. Got nothing there, Doc? You don't want to take them down to like crazy low levels, right? Yeah, seven is pretty low. <laughs> All right, so we have uh, made it onto Pipeline Road. We did have to stop and switch the battery, so I have my battery back in now. It started at 12.4, it's currently saying 11.3. We have nine and a half miles to make it to pavement. Maybe at that point we'll put another battery in. As annoying as this whole adventure is, it's actually fun. We're having a good time, so. Oh man, uh, glad to be out here with people. Glad to be out here with buddies. Having just pulled off about the most stressful 30 miles I hope I ever have to drive, we found a campsite on some BLM land outside of Kofa and got to work pulling out the alternator so Jeff could drive another couple hours to pick up the closest replacement alternator, which was all the way in Blythe, California. We drove you a lot of miles with no alternator. <laughs> Dude, that's got to be the furthest anyone's driven that I know without an alternator. It's the first time I've ever disconnected an alternator and then said, okay, let's drive let's 30 miles. <laughs> Delivered a lot of babies. <laughs> but, uh, it's about the same weight. And I say it's, the right. belt's still gonna be there. You go. Okay, belt's off. All right. So all we gotta do is find somebody to drive this sucker to uh, Blythe and come back with a new one. It's not as soon as I turn. Jeff. Oh my God! May I got present it out? to you. Perfect. That's not too bad at all. Sweet. All right, Jeff. I don't have a wife, Making the but run. I'm off to Blythe. So. <laughs> yeah. All right, Doc, we'll see you in about two hours. Hey, man, drive and, safe. Uh, I think we're 100%. So. All right. Can't wait. Thank you. What a great guy, huh? Oh, man. I'm so lucky. So lucky. There goes Jeff off in search of an alternator. With the alternator out and Jeff on his way to Blythe, we could finally relax for a few minutes as we eagerly awaited his return. I hear a vehicle coming in. I believe it's my alternator. You the Jeep parts guy? Delivery, <laughs> not All right, so we have a replacement. This looks just like the one we pulled out, except for shinier Look and it's, not burned up. It doesn't match the dustiness of your Does engine. not match. We're going to know it's new for we'll sure. Fix that tomorrow. <laughs> oh, man. I hope this is just gonna solve everything. Well, you know, considering once we got some charged batteries in there, yeah. it seemed to do okay. You think it's time to get a new Jeep? 
Yeah. I'm, I'm not gonna say that. <laughs> it probably is though, right? I think uh, this one will be just fine. Yeah, worse than we thought. Should I fire it? Live. Live. And that 13 tells us that we're doing okay. Well, we got it fixed before sunset. Fixed. In the end, our encounter with Kofa Wildlife Refuge transcended mere destinations and became a story of resilience, friendship, and the unyielding spirit of exploration. The desert had tested us, but we emerged with stories to tell, strengthened friendships, and a renewed appreciation for the richness of these journeys.